people were happy to go in ah. because it's in the pretext of going to that earlier company not ah. my center Okay so sorry doctor you're mentioning about the major um the major hurdle yeah okay the major hurdle that we all are facing is actually the lack of awareness of mm. mental health issues okay why what is mental health why do we have uh, issues in mental health what are the factors that uh, affects the mental health what will happen or what are the symptoms if you have low uh, poor mental health you know and also the the gigantic stigma and and discrimination that we are facing day in and day out you see due to the lack of uh, awareness the stigma increases mm. so uh, government and individuals need to spread the awareness uh, through any mass media Okay. Constantly yeah. and consistently, yeah. you need to drum it that it's okay not to be okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. This is important. Yes. Uh. But it's not okay if you don't get help for that. Correct. That's the second part, right? Mm. Because okay, first of all, you need to stop with the whole suck it up thing. Mm. And the second thing is get help. Yes. I feel like this part especially is a big challenge. the getting help but because there's always the fear of what happens if somebody sees me as weak or what happens if somebody sees me walking through the doors of a um psychiatric oh yes i face that yeah. a lot with my clients mm. i face that when i had my own physical um clinic or center mm-hmm. uh, i had clients walking in like we are in some kind of scandalous relationship oh. <laughs> <laughs> i was like wow okay <laughs> <laughs> you know with all the hush hush you know <laughs> uh, they will just, uh, quickly scurry in mm. uh, and lock the door and I'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as i moved my clinic to a place where which is within another building uh-huh. uh people were happy to go in ah. because it's in the pretext of going to that earlier company not yeah. my center Ah uh, so okay i can see that too mm. it's because of that too i see ah uh, it's just like how uh people are still refusing to get help for their physical issues right yep. it's just like that for mental health also mm. like but they don't understand that mental health is anything and everything about you the way you sit the way you walk the way you talk the way you stand mm. the choice of words your intonation um even uh your tonality all of that all of that your eating pattern true everything shows your mental health right including the decisions you make decisions you make the type of friends or lack of friends mm. all of that yeah. it shows your mental health for instance um plus size Mm-hmm. Being plus size, I've always been known as for eating disorder, because you can't keep your mouth shut. You eat mm-hmm. a lot, mm-hmm. all kind of stuff. They say yeah. even laziness. They say it's because of that. But no, it's all your mental health. Right. If you're mentally healthy, then you would be in a fitter situation. Right. Okay, doctor. You mentioned about like how Malaysia needs more awareness mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. mental health. Hundred percent. Could you give us an example of maybe a country that has better awareness? Um America, huh? UK, okay. Australia, okay. They have better awareness uh also because the population uh who suffers from it and they're open about it. Mm. So yes. Okay. So being not open. because or because the government wants to be very pro no no. no. Okay. It's just because the people there are also very much needing the help. So yes, the transparency had to come. Mm. But here it's not that same. Mm. In Malaysia, we have four most common mental health issues conditions: yeah. uh, depression, anxiety, trauma, and psychosis. Okay. 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 So what are we doing about it? 
what are the resources that we are getting how many psychologists are there even in in government bodies how many psychologists are there how mm. many psychologists and psychiatrists are there in tanjung rambutan how many of them are in jabatan penjara malaysia mm. you understand yeah. so as long as we lack of uh, this kind of uh, assistance this kind of uh, expertise we are always going to struggle and uh, why isn't there any uh, insurance coverage or why isn't right. there any pricing governance how much to charge yeah. for a for a client why there is none yeah very true doctor and doctor i have a question as you mentioned about pricing a lot of people automatically have the perception that if you were to seek help this is this is another thing i feel like i've heard a lot it's expensive mm. if you were to go to private um you know like if you were to and then if you were to go to government it's like almost impossible to get in apparently i don't know i've never done my research honestly and perhaps you could clarify about this um uh, which i would greatly appreciate but this is uh, of course what i've have heard on, from other people so private very expensive but i would assume like private healthcare but um government is almost impossible to get help that's that's the what i've heard but please doctor if you may um perhaps you could clarify this thanks for asking this question government does help uh but unfortunately as i said again lack of uh, human resources so sometimes it's like a roulette you may not get the same psychiatrist again okay understand so you need to retell your story over and over again ah, so okay. it can be annoying and frustrating uh that is government but 100% you can get appointment mm. there's no such thing that you can't you can okay. uh in terms of private private hospitals also you can the pricing is not as bad as private practicing psychologists or psychiatrist okay okay private practicing psychologists or psychiatrist um not that i know of the because i have seen uh, a, a, a psychologist a senior psychologist um not in clang valley sorry is uh, this area clang valley clang valley yes. oh okay so in clang valley <laughs> but not exactly this area <laughs> but nearby to their area okay uh who's charging 800 ringgit for a hour wow you know if you tell a person you need to pay 800 ringgit for an hour that person can can pass out of depression yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean wow i mean yeah, where is the people? yeah so um i don't know this is my personal view la mm. i'm not imposing it to anyone um there is two uh job or i would say two vocation in your life that you cannot see money mm. one is education another one is healthcare mm both yeah. is also aliving a person correct correct you know so um that's why i i am not involved in this kind of things mm. um i even have this uh, 50 ringgit scheme for b40s oh. and those who are jobless they can pay 50 ringgit and come to me for uh, therapies okay. you know counselings and stuff yeah. i treat them just like every other client uh and yeah I feel that it should not be exorbitant or it should not be more than a uh, specialist mm. because psychologist I'm talking about the doctors a PhD yeah. uh, psychologist and psychiatrist even senior psychologists also they can charge a specialist price because they are same par with specialists considered mm, lah right see, yeah uh however when you are charging more than that i find it's pointless Mm. How are you going to help people? So are you kind of trying to say that only the T20 uh deserves good mental health? Correct, exactly. That's so what the about the lower M40 and B40? Correct. When that is where the crux of the issue arising. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So when it comes to I uh, for me lah, I feel when it comes to education and healthcare, you cannot see money. If mm. you see money, you can't help. If you want to help, you can't see money. Mm. Yeah. So yes um uh, I mean privately uh, financially I won't say that I'm super successful mm. but uh emotionally and spiritually I am super successful because Wonderful. I love how I see people coming back to me saying that they are well they are better yeah. they got themselves a job and stuff like that So yes um if you can't afford also okay doctor I that also I cannot afford okay am I 
Google up. There are a lot of places in Malaysia who gives free services. I see. It's okay. all a Google away. Mm. Google it up. Get their assistance. Many people come back to me telling me about this particular group um, who does tele services. I don't want to tell mm-hmm. who is it. Uh, very very famous. Unfortunately, they don't have the engagement. I see. Okay. So okay, that's just one. Yeah. There's many others. Go for it. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, go for yeah. it. Find out. Seek and you shall receive. Correct. You cannot Correct. sit in one place and imagine right. that help will come to you. No. Very true. We have God to help those who help themselves. True. So, help yourself, seek and you shall find. Very true, doctor. Mm. So, we have to help ourselves first. And doctor, like um, based on your um, experience as well, would it usually be the patients themselves who walk inside to the clinic, or would it be like uh, somebody who bring them like okay, my whoever needs help? Both also, like, I have. Yeah, both also. Okay. Um, sometimes the parents will come bringing in their child. their child. Okay. Um, the child could be thirty years old, forty years old. Oh, okay. But still, the parents can bring them. Yeah, mm. it's fine. This is what I meant. Um. If they don't feel uh, brave enough or bold enough to come, you can accompany them. Okay. But during the session, you can sit out. Okay, yeah. So, so giving them right. that privacy for them to open up. Correct. But apart from that, yes, you can always bring them with you. Okay. Yeah. They don't have to come alone. But yes, I do have people who come alone. Mm. I even have teenagers who comes alone without the parents' knowledge. Wow. But that's amazing. Like the fact that they are, you know, yeah. willing to get that step, take that yes. step forward. Yes. Wow. But that's that's um being aware, right? It all starts from that because the, probably the teen was already aware that mm. the person needs help. Mm. And how about those that are so going to social support and um support by family and stuff like that? How about those that are like, oh no, I don't need help, but maybe you already see signs and symptoms of it that the person does need help. What can one do to, of course, we cannot force, but perhaps encourage them to try and seek help. Would, um, one would be perhaps to accompany them, I assume? Accompany them mm. would be good. Giving them more exposure on why it's healthier to get assistance. Uh, and then, yes, yeah, sometimes not every time you get heated off with the right psychologist. I see. Oh, okay, uh, sometimes right. you, you need, it takes time. Okay. Like for me, most of my clients are recycled. Ah. So they come from other places. All right. Yeah. Okay, okay. So... Uh, Perhaps, perhaps why uh, I get uh, a better reach with my clients is because uh, I've also been there, done that. Hmm. I have been a victim myself. Mm-hmm. So I understand when you say certain things. Mm, yep, yep. You've I, been in their shoes. Yes. Yeah. Like there was one, uh, a client of mine, a new client... Uh, whose son became unalive. He was in his 30s. I see. And the father was in his 60s. Oh. So, in a nation lifestyle, we wouldn't expect that. We would think that, you know, the son would bury me. Correct. Not the other way around, right? Correct. Yeah. So, the father was totally... was was very distraught. Very, very distraught. Um, however, he was very much in control. He didn't want to open up much mm. and stuff like that. So then, until I started to um, share a story or two about my own personal loss, okay, which led him to like, you know, be appreciative and he felt that, hey, you know what? She's not going to judge me because she is right beside me going along with this. Mm. So then he opened up and he, even after that he sent me a message telling us uh, thanking me for sharing my side of the story so that you know he didn't feel alone mm. and judged. Mm. He did use that word. So I was like okay that's good. Wonderful. Mm. And doctor like usually um the journey you know to getting better or recovery like I know every journey is different mm. but it's not just a, can it be just like one session or no definitely not yeah okay um so i don't know about the arrest uh for me what i will do i'll do diagnostic consultation to to see what is the issue 
so for some psychologists it may take more than one visit mm. some one visit okay? okay so it just depends um and then based on that only they will understand or they'll determine uh, what would be the next course of action what sort of therapy would be suitable uh, how many um sessions they would need mm. and stuff like that yes however end of the day no matter what think of it like building your muscles your trainer will tell you okay you need to take care of your diet you need to take care of that you need to take care of this blah 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 if you are not honest with yourself and take care and follow to the t yeah. then uh, you may not get well right. as as projected mm. it yeah. may drag on ah so 100% it falls back on to that person i understand okay Okay. you understand yeah. no like yeah. for instance like even medical also Correct. doctor give you medicine and everything ask you to take it up when you not taking your medicines properly how are you going to get well correct exactly right. the same way correct it's like eating um you know diabetes medication but having to take lots of donuts a day what is yeah. there Correct. or you not moving and being stuck in a stressful situation stressful mm. job will increase your sugar as well so then what's going to happen Very true. So, uh we are not genies. <laughs> we are not yeah. magicians. A uh, one visit doesn't cure you. Mm. It's impossible. Anyone say that it can cure you within one visit? Please run away. <laughs> Save yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Save your money. Red, red flag, guys. Red That's flag. That's a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, you need to be um logical about it. Be true, be honest about it. Are you working on Hmm. you know yeah. even journaling also when i ask my client um my client doesn't do journaling properly ah okay. then they will tell me oh doctor i could still couldn't sleep yeah duh mm. <laughs> <laughs> you must follow those steps in order for me to cure your insomnia mm. you mm. know and all these are done without drugs yeah so if it is done without drugs all the more 100% effort comes from you But the best thing is you can then say that hey you know what I have what it takes to heal myself. Mm. You know? Right. And right. uh if this time you healed yourself whenever you are sliding down the depression or anxiety yeah. you can catch yourself and un- unwound yourself in order for you not to go through that. Ah before you go deeper yeah. and closer to you know yeah to, That's I how know. it is I yeah. get my clients some of them who after a uh, an issue or a, or a loss they come to me they tell me doctor I can I, I can feel myself sliding down to depression but I'm mm. stopping is there anything else I need to do So then yes I will give them some other activities for them to do mostly on CBT cognitive behavioral therapy uh, yeah. uh, in order for them to cope with their loss better I see. Okay. Uh so that's how it is. Mm. So you'll be more aware of your emotional health, your mental health. Uh so oh, then Venice. your maturity will come up, you'll be much wiser, your emotional intelligence will also be better. But it's a work in progress, right, doctor? Nobody 100%. has like the peak of the, no. you know, yeah, in life. It has to be a work in progress. It's always WIP. Aren't we all? Correct. Till Correct. the day we meet our creator, we are always on WIP. Correct. That's very <laughs> <So>. <laughs> true. That's very true. And uh, it's okay to fall down. It's very much okay. Back up. Yeah. 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 Uh, you need to be kind to yourself mm. with your talk towards yourself, with your actions towards yourself. That's where the self love comes in. Uh that is why I also talk to people telling them to it is important for you to recognize your inner child and save him or her. Yeah. You know, the same type of love and devotion that you'd give to your child, you need to give it to yourself. Very true. We often forget that, right? Doctor? Yeah. Because who's going to do that for you? Correct. You can't expect your parents to do it. Yeah. So you have to self-parent. Mm. So when you self parent only your inner child will heal to become a better adult. Mm. Wow. Till then your inner child will be projecting in each and every actions that you do. Wow. Wow. <laughs> like we would think that we're controlling it but 
in actual fact, it's like poof everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> Everything yeah. you do, like yeah. you said. Yeah. For instance, when you have this is just an example, when yeah. you have a father who has been absent uh, emotionally or physically from your life since young, you tend to get husbands mm. or a uh, partners who are emotionally unavailable. Mm. He's there but he's not there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh he is supportive and everything. Yes, but I need to ask for it. Mm. Doesn't come spontaneously. Ah, that sort of a person. Mm. So you saw where is it coming from? Yeah. It's from your childhood. Inner child, yeah. So your inner child need to be uh nurtured and taken care of in order for you to be a better adult. And as an adult, I mean knowing that it's not about blame the blame game anymore. It's about working yourself, right? Within yourself to get better. at the end of the day you can't blame anyone after this because yeah. as soon as you have taken over the your your car you can't blame your parents who have been driving it all this while very true <laughs> <laughs> that's very true doctor okay doctor i think i'm down to our last few questions okay. really but uh you know th- people always say everyone needs a therapist <laughs> <laughs> true or false <laughs> yes true true Uh, everyone needs a therapist including me mm-hmm. i do need my therapist uh yes and and i have my own ways of unwinding myself especially uh i do go a lot and i do go to asylums meet a lot of characters and stuff like that so yeah i i am big on self love and self care mm, amazing really big on it Yeah, because it's really important, right, doctor? Mm, mm. That's nice. And um, last question, actually, you know, so you mentioned um, this just came on top of my head. You mentioned just now about um, uh, you know, when people talk about you, you know, I mean, we cannot control the actions of others. Yeah. We can't control about what other people say. True. But say, for example, if it's haunting in somebody's mind, for example, so somebody says you're horrible at this, or mm, you know, you're mm. you're the worst person ever, for example, um, and it's just like playing in their head. Is it going to be is it going to be difficult for them to you know go to sleep or you know stuff like that how how I I like your question yeah actually it is it is a topic that I touched during my anger management talks uh when a statement is stuck on to you mm. ask yourself why is it stuck on to you aha most okay. often it's because we be grudgingly resonate towards it we agree to it okay yeah and it hit it quite close to home and that's why we are in resentment i see okay for instance the word silly mm. it could be for some oh it's just a normal word it's okay yeah. but for some people they know that they may have grown up listening to that word being drummed at by their sibling by their parents mm. that so much so when someone else calls them silly it triggers them yeah it becomes a trigger okay it angers them yeah. you know why because deep down they have grown listening to that number one and they unfortunately inevitably uh ab- embraced that word as part of their identity i see so it hit too close to their home ah so hence why it is still haunting you so you need to understand why is it haunting you right okay so that's the first question you need to ask yourself first so these are the small small knots that you need to work on yeah to unknot yourself so that if and at all someone bullies you whatsoever you are you become how do i say relentless mm it doesn't hurt you yeah very true okay doctor so i think we're almost at the end okay. of our podcast <laughs> and right. um just one last part just any parting words to our viewers you know about this topic Okay, we have touched a lot of topics. Yeah, we did a lot. Okay, so maybe perhaps about mental health. I mean, um, well, perhaps not so much. I mean, more of um, you know, uh, building a healthy mental health, mental health. Um, all of us know what we need deep down, but we deny ourselves due to whatever past experiences that we have faced all this while. um so due to that right we tend to put ourselves at the back burner 
the most important thing that you need to understand is that you matter when you are fine when you are good you are able to handle everything million times better so you need to remember that you matter nothing else that is the first and last you matter for you to matter you need to take the actions for yourself so your mental health is important yes of course without it we cease to exist so yes thank you so much doctor <laughs> i think that's a very important message and i think a, a reminder that we all need to hear absolutely, as well absolutely thank you doctor thank you Most so much welcome. for your time thank you thank you all right guys